Hey everybody, it's me, Margaret. And as knitters and crocheters, we have an unending supply of yarn scraps. And I'm always trying to look for something creative to do with them. And so here we come upon the Christmas crafting season. So it's time to think about what could we do that's holiday related with our yarn scraps. I threw myself into Pinterest and I always get in trouble doing that because yeah, I'm a knitter and crocheter, and yeah, I love to do crafts, but I can't always pull off some of those Pinterest things. But I found something that I could do. I had a great time with it, and I found some extras that I haven't even tried yet that I wanted to share with you. So let's look at a few of them. Decorating your packages is a simple use of scraps. I love this Rudolph, and these people get really creative with some brown craft paper. Better yet, ask for paper bags next time you're at the grocery store, if your grocery store offers this. The inside of the bags are free from logos and designs. There were no instructions for these, but it's simple enough to figure out, like sketch a simple design in pencil and use yarn to fill it in, or merely outline it. Or look how simple this Christmas tree is. Wrap the yarn around, oh, seven or eight times I'm guessing, and tie it at the top with another scrap. And look at this one in the back. Is that a small stuffed animal back there with that pine cone? Well, we can pop over to Ravelry and grab a pattern for a cute amigurumi in whichever craft we prefer. While Ravelry can provide us with plenty of knit and crochet ornament patterns, you may prefer some simpler ornaments. I tried my hand at these pom-pom ornaments in 2018, showing my successes and failures, <laughs> but in the end, they came out great, and I shared a few tips and pitfalls that I learned along the way. But there are so many other scrap yarn ornaments out there, like simply covering a foam ball with bulky yarn, or better yet, updated old ornament. But look closer at this one. They actually braided the yarn first. And I love these from the Little Yellow Wheelbarrow. She crocheted a chain first before gluing and wrapping, and notice that she didn't care if it twisted along the way, which gave it such an interesting texture. I love this one. I'm trying hard not to bring anything new into this house as we have a big move coming up in the spring. So what about wrapping cardboard shapes? It sounds good in theory, but let me tell you, it's harder than it looks. I first tried this stocking shape, but it hit the trash before I got a picture of it, and I didn't even try the mitten, but I did find success with the star. I wrapped each of the star points first and finished with the middle, just turning and wrapping until it was full as I like. Then I added a loop as a hanger, and I'm done. And while I loved this bird, I haven't tried it yet, but I did find this tree to be a breeze. This one is great for kids and or a rustic Christmas theme. And here are a few others that would fill that bill as well. And back on the subject of wrapping sphere shapes, these were so funny, and they're quick and easy too. Now as knitters and crocheters, we've all seen a version of this ornament here on the right. But what if you add a work in progress to it? Cute, huh? You can easily make a crochet version by getting some of these inexpensive plastic hooks. I think I got these from Walmart. Take the smallest one that they offer and some wire cutters, and then just snip it to the length that you want, which of course would depend upon the size of the yarn ball that you make with your scraps. Have you seen these mini hats? The instructions on this blog were slim to none, so let me show you what I figured out. Totally guessing the measurement, I cut at uh, three quarters of an inch off a toilet paper roll for the ring. And using an old game or DVD case, whatever this is, I wrapped the yarn 40 times. This gave me 40 lengths of yarn at about 16 inches. I wanted my hat to be striped, so I did a second color the same way. And then I took three strands of each color, folded the group in half, and fed it through the center of the ring, and pulled the ends through the loop. Give it a tug so it's nice and snug, and then I alternated colors all the way around, but that's up to you. When I filled up the ring with no cardboard showing, I straightened and snugged up all the knots, and then I had to sort of turn it inside out. That means I had to stuff the loose ends through the middle and hide the knots on the inside of the hat. Try to get those stripes straight, and, and then I gathered it like a ponytail at the top. I used a rubber band because I thought it would be more secure. To provide the shaping, the instructions suggested using tissue paper, but I used some scrap fabric, you know, whatever. I trimmed the excess to make the palm for the top, and then I covered the rubber band with scrap yarn. 
and I added a loop for a hanger. Ta-da! Later I found out there were better tutorials out there, so I'm including this one as well because it's also a cute variation, isn't it? Now I know this question is going to come up. How does this little ornament compare to one done on the Addy Professional Knitting Machine? Well, this one over here was done with some worsted weight wool, some heavy worsted weight Vanish Choice. I did about 50 rows and to put one end inside the other and that's the size that you get for that. But of course when you shrink down your yarn, you shrink down the tube, the hat itself. This is 30 rows with DK weight yarn and it's pretty comparable. So there you go. How about some cute wreath ornaments? These were made from mason jar lids, and these were made from shower curtain rings, neither of which I had. So I cut the shape out of a scrap of foam board to give it a more rounded appearance. I ran some hot glue around the front to build it up a bit. Because it's a solid ring, you have to pull the yarn through the middle, and I found I could manage it best if the yarn were shorter, so I did it in sections. I put a dot of hot glue at the beginning and the end of each section, and just wound the yarn over the ends to hide them. Add a loop and some decoration of your choice, and it's finished. Note, wouldn't this make a great wreath for a dollhouse or an elf door? Now a word about stars. There are tons of free patterns out there, so choose your favorites, and let me tell you the secret to making them look like these pictures. It's fabric stiffener. Now if you have some, great, but you can make some by thinning out some glue. Most of the time these stars will look like flowers when you finish them, but saturate your star with stiffener and block it on some cardboard. It won't stick because it's thinned out so much. It's around 50-50. So when it's dry, it'll hold that pointy star shape. And here is the finished product. And I think it came out great. You can actually see the star shape as opposed to that flower looking shape that it, it first came out. And it's it's pretty hard <laughs> with the fabric stiffener. I mean, I can bend it and everything, but it holds its shape really, really well. So I thought you'd like to see that. And while you have the glue out, you may like to try one of these. I did this as a kid and they're fun and messy, but cleanup is easy. And here's another version that looks fun too. I've never tried this one. And lastly, the surprise filled gift ball. What an excellent way to put those random little bits to good use with nary a care to color or yarn weight. Or what about that yarn in your stash that you don't really enjoy working with, but you hang on to it just in case? Well, here you go. Now I've put all the links to everything that I've talked about so far and more in the description box below. Actually what I did was I created a Pinterest board of things to do for the holidays with our yarn scraps. And the reason I chose to do it that way is so you could actually see a picture of what you're looking for, click the link, and I fixed it so that those links will go directly to the tutorials. I get kind of frustrated with Pinterest sometimes because you have to click four or five different links trying to get to what you want. So I fixed all those for you and that would be quick and easy for us to get to in the future. So have fun looking through those and don't forget to look at the ones that I didn't talk about and see if there's anything there that appeals to you. I have have a, a ton more of yarn scraps that I need to get rid of so I'll be trying some more in the future thanks for watching bye